Hey, everybody. Good to be with you. I'm David Burns. Thanks for joining me today. Let me guess. You're a brand new beekeeper. You maybe are getting a package or just installed a package or a nuke or something like that. And you feel like you are really anxious or kind of worried or maybe you're pumped up and excited about how great this is getting into beekeeping for the first time. And uh, all at once, you're starting to feel like I might have imposter syndrome. Here I am wearing a bee suit, holding a uh, hype tool and a smoker, but I don't feel like I'm really a beekeeper. I don't feel like I have enough whatever it takes to be a beekeeper. Oh my gosh. And you just have all this apprehension or anxiety. Now, some of you may have a lot of excitement, enthusiasm right now because it's just starting and you just have installed your bees or something. But there's going to come a point in the future really quickly when your bees start expanding that you're going to have more and more anxiety because now you're going to be like, uh oh. Wait a minute, am I supposed to treat for mites now or later? Am I supposed to test now? Oh, I've read all the books, I took classes, I, but I can't remember everything. I can't, it's, it's overwhelming. And then you have this concept and struggle of, I ask 11 beekeepers one question, I get 11 answers. Let me talk about that. It's not that there's only one answer. Those 11 beekeepers probably all hold the correct answer but there's just 11 different ways to do things the right way. Most of the time, I mean, you can get a wrong answer in there, but I'm just saying, a lot of beekeepers don't agree on how they do things, but the outcome is all the same. The results are success. So just because I may give an answer that's different than somebody else's answer, we both might be right. It's just a different way of doing it. And, and for example, instead of buying a fork truck and putting your bees on a forklift and putting them on a flatbed bee truck trailer and taking them somewhere, you're a smaller beekeeper. So you just have a buddy come over and the two of you figure out how to strap the beehive together, put it in the back of your station wagon and haul it to the place that you want it to be. OK, so there's different ways that the outcome is the same. The beehive was moved, but it's just going to be different according to the beekeeper, the, the, the type of beekeeper they are and how much experience they have. So don't freak out when you hear different answers. I see too many beekeepers uh, that are brand new getting all caught up in the minutia and micromanaging every single little thing in beekeeping. Now, for example, I have said that when you put your bees in a deep box, you should wait until about five or five to seven frames in your first brood box have been pulled out and have bees on them. Five to seven frames, then you should add your second box. Somebody asked me, which is it? Is it five or is it seven? See, that's getting a little bit too detailed. It doesn't matter. It's, it's approximately, it's not going to make the outcome any different. You can do it at five. You can do it at seven. You could go to eight maybe, but if you get past eight, they might swarm on you. So what we're trying to do is get the bees in the first box to spread out this way before we put the next box on so they can spread out up there. If we put two boxes on at one time, they may just spread out this way and it may take them forever over the two boxes to slowly spread out like that. That's why we say, let them grow wider in the bottom one, five to seven, and then put the next box on. So beekeepers may have different answers. For example, I've heard beekeepers say, uh, hey, let's make a split. Do you leave the queen, the old queen, back in the parent colony when you make your split? Or do you take the, the queen and put her in the split with the, the new bees? It doesn't matter. As long as each part of that split has eggs, what difference does it make? There can be little nuances. There can be different uh, results of what you want to achieve. But for the most part, it doesn't really make any difference. OK, so don't freak out if you get a slightly different answer uh, from a beekeeper. It just means they have a different way to do it. I want to talk to you, though, about how you might feel phony like an imposter right now. You're not. What you are is a new beginner. You're having this anxiety as all new beginners have had. Every beekeeper out there that has ever started uh, beekeeping when they first started, they had the same feelings of, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel overwhelmed. And so just give yourself permission to be a new beginner and you have to learn. It's okay. So feel, just take a deep breath and let that anxiety slip away and just say, wait a minute, I don't have to be like the guy down the road that's got a hundred hives or guy over there that's got 10 hives. I'm a new beginner. I have a right to not know what I'm doing. When I show up at a bee club and ask a question, it's okay to say, my name is Sally. I don't know what the heck I'm doing and I'm just here to learn. Okay, we've all been there. So don't feel like you've got to 
have this ego where you have to kind of rub elbows with the big boys, the big beekeepers, and act like you know everything that they know. Be, just be open and honest and be humble about it and just gleam off the knowledge of all of these people that are around you that can help you out. Because I know as a new beginner that that imposter syndrome can cause anxiety. Like, oh, I don't know if my bees are okay. Should I be feeding them? It's gonna cool off. Should I take the feeder off? Will it be okay if it gets 38 degrees Fahrenheit tonight? Maybe I shouldn't feed them when it's that cold. I, you won't believe the number of questions that people just have asked me. And, and it's so easy. I just wanna write back in an email, especially those that are on my mentorship program. Okay, that's not gonna really matter a lot if it's gonna get down to 38 tonight. It's gonna to be warm tomorrow. Leave it on there. They'll just ignore it when it gets cold. It's not gonna hurt them. It's okay. But we start, new beginners start feeling like, uh oh, I don't wanna make a mistake. I feel like this is a struggle. And so, what I wanna give you is some pointers. First of all, give yourself permission to be a beginner. You are a beginner and you're learning. The second thing is, as a beginner, you're gonna grow. That's what you're wanting to do. Find a way to grow. Every time you go and work your bees and learn about your bees more, I want you to come away saying, what did I learn today? Write that down, go over it again. If there was something you didn't understand when you were in the hive, then that's the time to look it up in your book or watch a YouTube video or something. Ask a mentor, take a class and say, I was in my hive and I saw this funny yellow stuff. What was that? You know, And you just have to grow. You have to ask questions that to you, or to some people might feel like they're too simple, but you just have to start. It's okay to ask those simple questions, but we have to be willing to grow. Even though I, I started beekeeping almost 30 years ago, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, so it never stops. The next thing I wanna encourage you and kind of pump you up and be your cheerleader, get you excited about being a new beginner is that you really do have to understand that beekeeping is more than just a leisurely, relaxing hobby. If you're a hobbyist, beekeeping is a notch above a relaxing, <laughs> leisurely hobby. For example, if you had a hobby where you like just uh, once in a while piddle with model trains, you might go in the basement, you got a little model train set up there, you might uh, turn it on and watch trains go around once a month or something like that. Beekeeping is more than that because beekeeping is, um, bees are livestock. So if you're a, a cattle farmer, or let's say you have a whole bunch of, well, two or three cows, I wouldn't really call you your cow uh, keeping to be a hobby. <laughs> you know, uh, taking care of your cows are more than a hobby. Now, it may be something you do after work, but those cows are livestock and they're demanding more things like food and water and medical attention if they need it from your vet and all of these things. So since bees are more than... Uh, like a train is just an inanimate object, it's a hobby. Bees are living livestock. So a little bit more than a hobby, it requires us to do our work, physical work. So be comfortable and tell yourself that as a new beginner, I'm gonna have to cowboy up and I'm gonna have to do the work. Now, I mean, I don't have to be out there every day. I like to tell people, inspect your hive every two weeks after swarm season. Just check for eggs, make sure everything looks good, they have room to grow, check for mites once a month. You know, There's things that we just need to do and that requires us to do the work. So already tell yourself right now, I know it's kind of exciting, maybe you just installed your package and it was easy and it's new and you're so excited, you're telling all your friends you're a beekeeper, oh, this is cool, but there's gonna come a point when you're gonna feel, it happens to all of us, overwhelmed. You're gonna go out there and go, uh-oh, I have a problem. You're gonna possibly, lose your queen or have too many mites or a small hive beetle or they're not growing, they won't pull wax out on the frames. There's these things that are in our future, all of us. And so we just have to implement work to uh, solve the problem that we see. So don't think that your new hobby as a beekeeper is gonna be without you having to work at it. Now it's not gonna be something like a nine to five job, but it's gonna be a little bit more than a hobby. Just be patient and learn and grow and put in the work. And the last thing is I want to share with you is you got to have hope. What is life unless we have hope? And so whatever you're struggling with with your bees or in life, you got to hope that there'll be a day when you'll finally, like a light bulb goes off and you'll finally understand all of this beekeeping stuff. It's okay right now. I understand the light bulb is very dim if you're brand new, 
but one day it's going to be bright if you stay with it. I like to say it takes about five years to really kind of keep bees, keep inspecting frames. And by the way, this coming Thursday on April the 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, I have a live stream dedicated to help you know what you're seeing when you look at a frame. In other words, a lot of beekeepers are brand new. They don't know whether that's pollen, bee bread, a disease, larvae. What does healthy larvae look like? What's the difference between capped over honey, capped over brood? You know, it's just so many things that you can possibly see that it would help you to be able to know what you're looking at and respond accordingly during your inspection. I'll leave a link right here to that live stream. I hope you can join me, that'll help you so much. But have hope and faith that you're growing as a new beginner, you're working, you're learning, and it's okay right now to feel like a little bit phony. Like I don't really, I feel more like a bee haver than a beekeeper because I just started out and I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay, it really is. Are we relaxed yet? Come on, leave a comment below if this has encouraged you uh, to get over a little bit of the apprehension and anxiety about your bees, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna be fine, we're gonna get through this. I'm here to help you, I'm making a lot of videos for you guys to help you out. In fact, I just made a live stream that I want you to watch if you weren't there, and it helps you understand how to do your first few inspections after you get a hive or your overwinter colony for those of you that are experienced. Find me over here on this video and let's work through some really good tips and tricks on bee inspection.